Hey, what's up, everybody? Tommy Kraft here, writer, director, executive producer, among many other things, on Star Trek Horizon, an independent feature-length Star Trek fan film. If you haven't seen that, uh, you can check it out somewhere around here uh, on the screen. There's a link. There will be. In the meantime, I'm going to bring you a review of the 1.2 kilowatt Chinese HMI light. It's a clone of the Airy light that does the same thing. And this particular brand I bought was by Kame TV or Came TV. I don't know how you pronounce it, but something like that. Um, and their eBay seller, uh, the name of the seller on eBay is Photo Light. It's kind of confusing, and there's a lot of different sellers that seem to all be selling the same product. But this is my experience with Kame and slash Photo Light. And so, uh, without too much further ado, I will get to the review. Now, you may notice a sound in the background. That is the ballast for the light. It's about, I don't know, eight feet away from me, where the microphone is right now. So that should give you an idea of the noise, but there's obviously ways around that for shooting. I just wanted it in here so you could get a feel for what the noise would be like. Now, I don't really know, in full disclosure, how this compares to the Airy unit that does the same thing because I've never actually used an HMI before in my lighting. Uh, we don't have any rental areas or facilities in my area that are close by, so I figured it'd be best just to purchase this one because it's only a thousand bucks USD. So I did, and so far I love it. So without further ado, I will uh, get to uh, an unboxing, a very brief unboxing of the, of the unit as it came in the mail. And I'll show some test footage and give my thoughts as we're going through that. So here we are at the unboxing. You can see I've sped it up pretty darn quick. Uh, it's like 2000% speed up. It took me about 25 minutes to get this thing unpackaged and fully put together. It was quite the effort and that's only really a testament to how good of a job they did with the packaging. As you can see here, the case is really, really spectacular. My initial thought was if the quality of the actual electronics and light are as good as this case, then we're in good shape. And here is me going through the various bits and bolts that came with it. That's for attaching the, uh, the stand or whatever it is that goes to the stand, the yoke. Um, and uh, they're inspecting the insides. And I will say initially that crank for the spot and uh, flood mechanism was really loud. And here's the light bulb. Uh, it looked good at first, uh, but as I will show you later, it didn't last so long. Um, put it in, made sure to get no oils on. All was good. And... Um, and now is assembling the yoke and trying to get it attached. I am not mechanical at all. So this was a bit of a challenge for me, figuring out which washers go where because there are no instructions with this thing, period. So you just kind of have to work with it. And finally I was able to get it and it all seemed to go together. And here we are, her first power up. You can see my brother standing back there. He also enjoys big lights. Uh, and I plugged it in outside because I didn't know if I'd trip a breaker and there's not really anything important plugged in out there. Thankfully, there are no breakers tripped. And here we go. No issues. Takes a couple minutes to come up to temperature. As usual with an HMI, you start out with the very green tint. And as it comes up, you get that nice uh, 6,000K, give or take, daylight balance temperature out of it. And I had no issues. It worked a charm. So the next thing I want to go into is just taking a quick look at the actual power consumption for this unit and go over a little bit of HMI math. So here I have it plugged into my kilowatt to measure amperage and watts. This thing is good for up to 15 amps, so it didn't be an issue, and I just flipped it on. As you can see, it slowly comes up in amperage as the temperature of the light comes up. Now with a magnetic ballast light, you're going to have a sudden jolt of amperage when you turn it on so it can strike the unit, but with these electronic ballast lights, it will slowly ramp up. So if you ever do trip a breaker, it won't be something that happens right as soon as you flick it on. And as it does take a couple minutes to come up to temperature, it will eventually stabilize between around 12.5 amps and 12.7 amps, give or take. Now this is a little bit higher than you would expect because the basic math for amperage is to take your wattage, your rated wattage, and divide by your volts. So in this case, we have a 1200 watt rated light divided by 120-ish volts for the US, which should give us 10 amps. But as you can see, we are drawing around 12.5. So where does this extra come from? Well, the deal is with HMIs, especially in lower quality electronic ballasts, you have something called power factor. This is actually a thing for all electronics, but you especially see it apparent in high end stuff like this. And power factor is a ratio for how efficient your appliance is. 
Now, it's a number measured between zero and one, and the closer to one you are, the more efficient your appliance is. So in the case of a genuine Airy, they rate their power factor at 0.98, so you're actually going to be very close to 10 or 11 amps draw for a light rated at 1200 watts. So to do our math for the power factor, it's really quite simple. We take our measured amperage, 12.5 amps, times our voltage, which is 120 volts, and we get 1500 watts. And then we take 1200, which is our rated amperage for the unit, and divide it by 1500, what we're actually drawing, and we get a power factor of 0 0.8. Now, this isn't exactly the greatest because the power factor for the air unit that draws the same amount of energy is 0.98. But honestly, I'm okay with that because this unit is $1,000 and it's even a lot cheaper than Came TV's higher end unit. This is dubbed the economic unit after all, so I'm not surprised that it's a little more wasteful in its energy spending. Let's move on. So speaking of power consumption, this is our ballast, really simple. It does have a power con cable. I've heard of some you can speak on, but this is power con. Just a dimmer power switch, fan in the front and fans inside. And now taking a quick look up at the fixture, you can see the spot flood mechanism there. And here's the noisiness of it. The mechanism works really well, but it is quite painful on the ears, so uh, take that however you will. Uh, it works, it hasn't failed on me yet. But since we just mentioned cables, let's talk about that briefly. Now you can of course plug one of those heavy duty outdoor extension cords into your ballast and you'll be fine, but the problem is if you ever want to shoot sound, you'll have to get your ballast uh, quite a ways away from your camera and or your fixture depending on how you're setting up your lighting. So I went on Amazon and bought this 25 foot uh, PowerCon cable. It works a charm. You also have to buy the coupler. All in all, it was like 50 bucks for the cable and 17 for the coupler and uh, I got a great extension out of it. The coupler and the cable are high quality and compared to the cables that the air units use this is much cheaper. You're easily talking two three hundred bucks for a cable of the same length on the airy unit. So this is actually a great deal and also I will say the higher end came TV units use that same expensive kind of cable. So that may be something to keep in mind here uh, and I noticed no issues with using a cable extension. And so here we are with the light set up outside the window. Uh, this is how I was shooting the intro to the video. You can see my diffusion blowing in front of it, which I thought looked kind of cool. Uh, it worked really great here. Uh, there were no issues uh, until a few minutes later. And here's the clip from the intro video just so you can see the comparison again for how it looked. And here's the dimmer on the ballast. You will notice something, noise. It does emit a noticeably high-pitched electrical whine when you turn it up to 100%, but you know, it doesn't really bother me uh, because you're going to be placing the ballast far away from your shooting location anyway. The thing that's, uh, it's just not useful, the dimmer is. You can see it hardly does anything here in this comparison, and it's really hard to see by the naked eye, but you know, honestly, I would just use a scrim in this case rather than have to futz with the dimmer. And so here comes the great boo-boo. This may just be a sign of my own ignorance, but I tried to do a hot restrike on the bulb that came with it. Uh, for those who don't know, with HMIs, you're not supposed to turn them on typically for between 10 to 20 minutes after you shut them off. You can usually get away with 5 to 10, but from now on, I'm just going to wait for quite a while after shutting it off. Because after I turned it off and then tried to hot restrike, this happened. Now I have to confess, I really thought you'd be able to hear my heart plummet into my stomach when this happened. Uh, alas, apparently you cannot, but this is what happened to the light after trying to hot restrike. It just flickered and flickered and flickered with weird color hues. Uh, and I left it on for a few seconds, ho seconds hoping it would come up, and of course it never did. And so eventually I just shut it off, and after cooling down, uh, I tried it again, and it still did it. And so then I decided to look at the bulb. And so that was that. It's kind of hard to see in the picture, but the glass is cracked. Part of the filament has welded to the glass. Uh, it was not a good picture all around. And so here we are a couple of days in the $200 shipment from B&H later. I have the new bulb from Osram slash Sylvania. It is the UV stop slash uh, UVS version. Uh, now I will say I am kind of glad I broke the bulb in this case because when you get a light this cheap, 
I don't know what kind of corners have been cut. And so I don't know if the Fresnel glass has been UV treated. Uh, of course, it will stop a good deal of UV itself just by the nature that it's glass, but still it's iffy. And so I know that this bulb is UV treated to block UV light. So between this and the Fresnel glass, I feel pretty safe. And for anybody who doesn't know, HMIs do put out a good deal of UV, so you always need that protection. And here I am just inserting the new bulb into the fixture and clamping it down. And for anybody who's wondering, when you get your new bulb, you may see a metal ball or two floating around in the chamber of the bulb. That's completely normal. That is the metal halide part of the metal halide lamp. And so now that it's in, let's uh, give it a fire up and, and see if it works. And we have liftoff. Now you can see there I was kind of worried that it wouldn't work and then I literally breathed a sigh of relief because I had read that uh, sometimes if you try to hot restrike an HMI that's not hot restrikable it could fry the ballast so that was my big concern but everything was fine and you could see it came up to temperature really quickly uh, as in the sped up video in real time it was uh, a couple of minutes it took to come up to temperature just like with the Chinese bulb so everything was uh, good and dandy. Now this was the fun part the first time I really got to play with the light I took it out in the snow. Well, not actually. I put it in the upstairs bedroom of the house, pointed it out the window during a snowstorm, and boy, was this fun, especially once the snow finally started to get going. You can see I got some really great shots here, and it's hard to tell in this shot exactly, but now you see this shot. It lit up my entire backyard, which is way cool for, for one fixture. There's my brother again. He's a photographer, also out playing in the snow and, and with my light. Um, now all these things were shot, you know, just on my little GH1. Uh, I don't think I ever went past 800 ISO, you know, 50, 150 is shutter speed and the pitch black with just this one light in the snow. And this is my favorite shot because it just shows you how far back into the yard it really can illuminate. So very happy with this light at this point with what it can do in the nighttime. And, uh, you know, it was a great stress test for the light it ran for. It's the first time it ran for a few hours straight, and it performed very admirably. And so with everything I've said so far, I think I'm ready to give you my verdict. What you're seeing here is the first time I took the HMI out in a production setting. This was a short comedy sketch I did, and uh, it performed flawlessly. I used it to punch the light rays into the windows, so it's in the back behind the girl there. And then also in the back window behind the guy as he's going through the fridge. And it worked great. I ran it all day for hours at a time. I shut it off, moved it to the back of the house, turned it back on, and then I wound up having to move it back to the front. So there was restriking periods in there. Of course, I did wait, you know, a good 10 to 15 minutes each time before turning it back on. But uh, yeah, everything said. Uh, I've had no issues with this so far, aside from that bulb issue, which was most likely my own fault. So I would certainly recommend this light to anybody who wants a uh, an HMI light on a budget that can really give you a powerful output because you're not going to find anything cheaper. Even if you buy a used HMI, it's going to be usually two to three grand at least. And you might have to settle for a magnetic ballast, which is a whole nother issue. And so all in all, I really can't say enough good things about this KM TV light. And uh, the only thing I will say is that I don't know if you'll get the same quality from all the other Chinese sellers. I've heard that they all sell the same products, that they all come from the same factory and they're just different sellers. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but I can vouch for KM TV's light and it's been really great for me. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful and enjoyed it. And please do ask me any questions if you have any, and I'd be happy to answer them. And if you would like to check out this short, uh, the link will be up on the screen. Thanks.